yourself one of the family we've taken to you so strong it's clear we're going to get along consider yourself well in consider yourself part of the furniture there isn't a lot to spare who cares what ever we got we share if it should chance to be we should see some harder days Empty larder days, why grouse? Always a chance for me, somebody to put the bill. And the drinks are on the house. Consider yourself our mate. We don't want to have no fuss. For after some consideration, we can stay. Consider yourself one of us. Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family We've taken to you so strong It's clear we're going to get along Consider yourself well in Consider yourself part of the furniture There isn't a lot to spare Who cares what have we got to It's wise to be handy with a rolling pin When the landlord comes to call Consider yourself our mate We don't want to have no fuss For after some consideration we can state Consider yourself one of us Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. What a great turnout. It's, uh, it's so nice to be playing for such a full house this evening. And uh, we'd like to invite you all to consider yourselves at home as you spend an evening with Sean Dara and family. I'm Sean Dara, and <laughs> yes, thank you. And this is the family. You can applaud them too, it's okay. So I'll, this is, uh, I'd like to introduce my dad, Lauren Dara. My mother, Annette Dara. And my brother, Jordy Dara. We are the Dara family, and we're thrilled to be playing here in the quaint little village of Newton Robinson. Now, we have, among the four of us, if you add all our ages up together, we've been making music for more than 200 years. That's true. Really? Yeah. If, yeah. if that you must add be it, you that's that old. Not I me. guess so, yeah. In various things, in Broadway musicals, symphony orchestras, church choirs, a cappella choirs, jazz bands, concert bands, karaoke bars, Tim Hortons. <laughs> Opera, yeah, wherever the melodies take us, that's where we go. So, um, but one thing that we don't often do together is we don't often all perform all together at the same time. We all have our own our own favorite styles and favorite places that we like to play. And so this is really our first time coming together as a family and pooling our resources to put on a full-length show like this. And what better audience for it than you guys, eh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe write that down so I can use that for the next show. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of everything tonight, some duets and some trios and some various ensembles. And uh, we hope you enjoy our cornucopia of musical treasures. But uh, for now, I'm going to take the stage and I'm going to play a couple of solo numbers on this baby right here. This is a clarinet, or a licorice stick, as the jazz musicians like to call it, because it's, uh, it's shiny and black and looks like a hunk of licorice. And um, clarinet music was big in the 1920s and 30s. And I, I do like to play a lot of stuff from that era, but I also like to think outside the box and play different styles on the clarinet that were never intended to be played on a clarinet, but I do it anyway, because I'm a reckless rebel without a cause. Yeah, you heard me. I think I'm gonna get that tattooed on my chest as soon as I get over my fear of henna. What? 
In the meantime, let's make some music. So you guys can vamoose. Just is my thing red now at the back? Can you can you? Yep. Is my tail red? Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to start off with uh, this is a song by one of Canada's own, a man named Mr. Leonard Cohen. From Montreal, here's Hallelujah. I probably spent about 12 to 24 hours playing with this wireless system so I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> anyway, here's Hallelujah. I'm going to be running across the stage back and forth, and that's what I didn't want to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, now I'm going to play a song from the 20s. From the... From the... From the roaring 20s. The good 20s. Not, not the sneezing 20s. This is a song called Sweet Georgia Brown. 
And if any of you, if there's any sports fans in the audience, you might recognize this as the Harlem Globetrotters theme song, which I have no idea how or why I even know that because I barely know a thing about football. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what year the Montreal Maple Leafs won the World Series. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we don't often all perform all together at the same time, but my dad and I have an Irish show that we do. If you, uh, if you haven't figured out yet by our name Dara and all those silent Gaelic letters at the end of it, we got a wee bit of the Irish blood in us. And um, so we have this show that we've performed a few times over the years, usually on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. <laughs> you got it. I got it. I got it. It's not right. It's right. I don't know about that. It's right. Oh no, it's not right. Trust me. Trust me. I can dress. You can dress him up, but what is the sign? This is. It's not even. Good God. <laughs> Come on. You need your PhD, PhD investology. This is rocket science, after all. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
So where was I? Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you haven't, uh, if you if you couldn't tell, we're a wee bit Irish. We got a wee bit of the Irish blood in us. And uh, funny story, we uh, we did some research on our family name, and we traced the roots back to the through the ancient Celtic languages, and we discovered that Dara means oak tree. And meanwhile, my mother's maiden name was Holtzman, which translates to woodchopper. <laughs> which tells you just about all you need to know about our family dynamic. <laughs> but anyway, so we have this Irish show that we've done a few times, often on St. Patrick's Day, and we were all set to go this past St. Patrick's Day and do it again. But uh, we'd been rehearsing for a month, and uh, we were all set to go. We had the car all packed with all our gear. We were out the door. And, uh, but as you know... On March 17th, the hills of Canada are not as green as the hills back home. And so as I was backing the car out of the driveway, the car went right over a patch of sheer ice, slipped and went right off the, right, right off the driveway and smashed into a tree. And so we had to start digging it out and my dad snapped his back. So we had to cancel our show and isn't that just the luck of the Irish? But uh, we're here today to do a couple of Irish songs for you and uh, just get to give you a wee taste of Ireland. And my dad's going to sing this one. And uh, the, don't, uh, don't let that outfit fool you. You're more likely to find him at the Grand Old Opera than the Grand Old Opry. It's, uh, he's, uh, he's sung all the best opera roles. Don Juan, Don Giovanni, Don Quixote, Don Cherry, I don't know. All the, all the Dons, anyway. And uh, this song... Who? The Don River. The Don River, Don River Valley. And um, this song is no, it's no La Chira Ram La Mano, but it's still got a little bit of an operatic twist to it. One of the notable recordings of this song was sung by the Welsh baritone Bryn Turfel. Here's a song called Carrick Fergus. I wish I was in Carrick Fergus, only for night in Ballygrand. I would swim over the deepest ocean, the deepest ocean to be by her side. But the sea Now, 
till I get a drink. I'm drunk today, and I'm sad and sober. A handsome robber from town to town. But I am sick now, and my days are numbered. So come all ye young men. And lay me down. So come, all ye young men, and lay me down. Thank you. Well, from the sublime to the ridiculous, I'm going to sing a wee Irish ditty now. And um, this is a song that I've been singing ever since I was a little kid, usually around Christmas time. And I know, I know, it's way too early for a Christmas song. Although I'm sure there's maybe one or two of you out there that already have your Christmas decorations up. Naughty, naughty, naughty. We never, we never put ours up until at least December the 1st. Not for any religious or political reasons, just because if we start celebrating any earlier than that, we're already sick of Christmas by the time the 25th rolls around. But um, this is a song that, uh, it actually dates back to the 1880s, I was just reading about it. But uh, the version that I grew up listening to was by my favorite, um, my favorite Canadian trio, Sharon, Lois, and Bram. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, it's a song about something that uh, I'm sure many of you can probably relate to, about being invited to your neighbor's Christmas party, even though you really don't want to go. <laughs> all right, I'm all set. As I sat in me window last Christmas, the letterman brought it to me. A little gilt-edged invitation saying, Gihooly, come over to tea. Well, I knew that the Fogarty's sent it, so I went just for old friendship's sake. Though I knew that the first thing they'd feed me was a piece of Miss Fogarty's cake. There were plums and prunes and cherries. There were citrons and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nutmeg, cloves and berries, and a crust that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance. Sure to work up a fine stomach ache. Ah, would kill him and twice after it and one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. It would kill him and twice after it and one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Mulligan wanted to try it. But really it wasn't no use, for we worked on it over an hour, and we couldn't get none of it loose. Till Kelly came in with a hatchet, and Murphy came in with a saw. That cake had been baked with such powers, for to paralyze any man's jaw. There were plums and prunes and cherries, there were citrons and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nutmeg, cloves and berries, and a crust that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance, sure to work up a fine stomach ache. Ah, it would kill him and twice after it. One slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Yes, he would kill him and twice after it. She proud as a peacock, kept smiling and blinking away Till she tripped over Flanagan's work boots And she dropped her false teeth in her tay Gahooly, she says, you're not eating Try a little bit more for me sake Oh no, Mrs. Fogarty, says I, for I've had quite enough of your cake. There were plums and prunes and cherries. There were citrons and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nutmeg, cloves and berries. And a crest that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance. Sure to work up a fine stomach ache. Ah, twit kill him and twice after eight and a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Yes, he would kill him and twice after eight and a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Maloney was took with a colic. O'Donnell with pain in his head. McNulty lay down on the sofa and he swore that he wished he was dead. 
Miss Bailey went into hysterics, and there she did a wriggle and shake. And everyone swore they were poisoned from it, Miss Fogarty's cake. There were plums and prunes and cherries. There were citrons and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nutmeg, cloves and berries, and a crust that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance. Sure to twerk up a fine stomach ache. Ah, it would kill a man twice after eating one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Yes, it would kill him. And twice after eight months late, though they said it was rice, I could swear it had lice, and they double the price when they throw in the mice for Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, now it's time to call my next victim to the stage, I mean, performer. My brother, Jordy, come on up. My, my, younger, my younger, bigger brother, Jordy. I promise we really are brothers, even though people often tell us that we couldn't possibly look any less alike. But uh, before you accuse him of being the mailman's baby, you should know that my dad was a letter carrier for Canada Post. So yeah, he bloody well better be the mailman's baby. But uh, Jordy came up all the way from Toronto today, the faraway city of Toronto, where he spends his day job as an actuary. And for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's all about uh, life insurance and risk management and math and numbers. He's going to use this one. It's kind of like an accountant, but without the personality. Right? I don't know. I don't know if he liked that one. I think I just felt my life expectancy go down by a couple of years. Um, so, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so um, Jordy's also, he's not only is he a, a numbers guy, he's also a master chess player, and he's got a rich bass baritone singing voice, and that's probably the only time he's going to get a compliment out of his brother. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't happen again. But uh, here to prove that, uh, here's Jordy to prove that uh, meeting an actuary with a personality doesn't necessarily have to be an impossible dream. Unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to go where the brave dare not go to right the unrightable wrong to love pure and chaste from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly and I know, if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this, that one man Scorned and covered with scars Still strove with his last ounce of courage To reach the unreachable Whew. 
I remember when Jordy sang that song about 14 years ago for karaoke at the Muddy Water in Beaton. Shout out to the Muddy. I know some of you know where that is. And, uh, and I knew exactly why he wanted to sing that song. It's because he wanted to impress the pretty girl that he liked. Ooh. Everybody, one, two, three. Ooh. Well, anyway, it worked, because they're married now. <laughs> and, uh, and his better half is here with us today. And uh, here to one-up her husband is Jordy's wife, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley is the newest member of the family and the only one of us that can handle six strings at a time. And um, she's beginning to learn that when you're a Dara, we make you do silly shows like this. <laughs> but um, this is, uh, Ashley's gonna be playing a, a song by one of the lesser known groups by, of the 60s called the, the Bottles, the Needles? Oh, the Beatles. <laughs> That's what it is. The Beatles, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Here's Ashley with All My Lovin'. A little bit, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Pretend that I'm kissing the lips I am missing And hope that my dreams will come true And then while I'm away I'll write home every day And I'll send all my loving to you All my loving I will send to you All my loving Thanks a lot. Thanks for humoring us, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley is no stranger to the music industry. She, uh, she makes, her, uh, makes her living as a chartered professional accountant for the Juno Awards. Oh, yeah. And she just received one herself today or something. What happens? Ten-year gift. So she's been an employee for ten years, and so she just uh, she just won something prestigious. So that's cool. We like. She just a Juno Award winning player. There you go. Yeah. We, we like to tell people that she runs the Junos because she kind of does. But uh, she's always uh, she's always in the loop, and she knows exactly what all the cool kids are listening to, and more importantly, what they're not listening to, um, which, to my surprise, apparently isn't. Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey and Johann Sebastian Bach. No, apparently they're listening to Olivia Rodrigo, whoever that is. 
But um, so last year, Ashley told me that if I learned an Olivia Rodrigo song, that I could be cool like her. And I'm still waiting for that to happen. But uh, I learned the song in the meantime. And uh, so it's called Good For You. And if you haven't seen the music video for it, don't. <laughs> or do. But I warn you, it's very dark. She uh, breaks into her ex-boyfriend's house, douses it with gasoline, and then proceeds to strike a match. But don't panic. I only torch the houses of people I don't like, so most of you are going to be just fine. Well, here's one for the kids now. This is a Disney song, but it's not just for the little kids. It's, for, uh, it's also for the big kids, too, like the 30 to 40-year-old kids. This is a song f that I grew up with from my childhood, it's, uh, and, but it's, it's, it stood the test of time, and kids are still listening to it today. From The Little Mermaid, Under the Sea, which is inarguably the best Disney song ever from the best Disney movie ever. That's not just my opinion. That's a scientific fact, by the way. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't agree with me, well, I'll, I'll cash you outside later. Here's Under the Sea.
you very much. Okay, so I'd like to take this moment now to say a big thank you to Andrea Nolan and Mark Birchall of the Tech Week Will Women's Institute. They were the ones that, uh, they planned this whole thing out. They hired us, they booked us, they helped sell tickets, and uh, they provided some of the delicious goodies that we're going to be eating at the reception after the show. Make sure you stick around for that, by the way. So uh, let's give Mark and Andrea a big hand. I'm sure many of you know them and how wonderful they are, but uh, what you may not know is that Mr. Birchall runs a very tight audition schedule. Oh yes, and uh, luckily I managed to get in just right on time for my four o'clock audition. And then Lauren showed up right at five, yep, right on time. Jordy showed up right at six o'clock, he was, he was good to go. Ashley showed up seven o'clock on the dot, yep, it was all good. But then Annette got a little bit lost on the way, and when she showed up at 8.02... <laughs> I'm just kidding, that never actually happened. But wouldn't that have been pretty funny, though? I can, uh, I can imagine my mother with her 50-plus years of musical theater experience being canned from, her, from auditioning for her own family show. I think she might be singing a different tune and I think it may have gone a little something like this. Can't believe it. Just can't believe it. I tried so hard. I worked so much. And nobody lets me audition. I mean, he's just like everybody else. They're all the same, aren't they? Really? That's my microphone. Other than that. Listen, I've got 36 expressions. Sweet as pie to tough as leather. And that's six expressions more than all them barrymores put together. Instead of just kicking me, why don't they give me a lift? Well, it must be a plot. Cause they're scared that I got such a gift. Well, I'm miffed. Cause I'm the greatest star. I am by far, but no one knows it. Why you gonna hear a voice, a silver flute? Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. They'll cheer each toot. Hey, that dame is terrific. When I expose it, now can't you see the look at me that Natural Camille, as Camille I just feel, I've so much to offer. Hey, listen, kid, I know I'd be divine because I'm a natural coffer. <coughs> Some ain't got it, not a lump. I'm a great big clump of talent. Laugh. <laughs> They'll bend in half. Did you ever hear the story about the traveling salesman? A thousand jokes. Stick around for the jokes. A thousand faces. I reiterate, when you're gifted, then you're gifted. These are facts. I got no axe to grind. Hey, what are they? Blind in all of the world so far. I'm the greatest star. Who is the pip with pizzazz? Who is a ginger and jazz? Who is as glamorous as? Who's an American beauty rose with an American beauty nose? And ten American beauty. I am the target and wham! One shot, one gunshot, and bam! Hey, Mr. Birchall, here I am! I'm the greatest star, I am by far, but no one knows it. That's why I was born. Down, 
you'll never see me Try the sky, cause that'll be me I could make them cry, I could make them sigh Someday they'll clamor for my drama Have you guessed yet? Who's the best yet? If you ain't, I'll tell ya one more time You bet your last time In all of the world so far I am the greatest, greatest star Thank you General, I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I am very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. <clears throat> lot of news. Hmm. Lot of news. <sighs> Got it. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I am very well acquainted to. I know the scientific names of beings and amalculus, and short and matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> I'd like to think that truly I can say with perfect honesty the one thing more impressive than my knowledge is my modesty. Although I memorize such facts and whip them off precociously, I've never in my life behaved the least bit braggadociously. Perhaps you folks are doubting me and branding me a counterfeit. Perhaps you think this nincompoop is absolutely full of it. Then I shall list for those of you who do insist it relevant. The entire periodic table, each and every Element. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium. Europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, and protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. 
everybody. No? There's homium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercury, molybdenum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium. And the lead, praseodymium, and platinum, plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium, and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium, and cadmium, and calcium, and chromium, and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, bikelium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, krypton, neon, radon, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. In short, in short, in matters vegetable, animal and chemical, I am the very model of a modern major general. Thank you. Thank you very much. By royal proclamation, by the Tequi Gwil Women's Institute of Newton Robinson, the modern Major General shall declare a 15-minute intermission. Please feel free to roam the premises, help yourselves to some water, but do return to your seats for the remainder of the spectacle. Thank you. God save the king.
And did I mention? I'm single. That, uh, that was Careless Whisper by George Michael and made even more famous by this guy on YouTube who goes by the name of Sexy Sax Man. And his thing, his shtick, is that he dresses up, well, kind of like this, and uh, he goes into these random places like college classrooms or food courts in a shopping mall, and he busts out his saxophone and starts playing Careless Whisper. And the best part of these videos is all the security staff telling him, excuse me, sir, you're going to have to leave. <laughs> but uh, that was one of the, that was really the biggest reason why I wanted to learn that song in the first place. So uh, it's, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go backstage now and put a shirt back on. <laughs> and while I'm doing that, uh, my dad's going to tickle the ivories with a piano solo. And uh, it's always a happy day when the accompanist gets his moment in the spotlight. So uh, this is a classical piece for those of you who like that kind of thing. And uh, it was written by the French composer Charles Gounod. It's called The Waltz from Faust. This is actually the ballet intermezzo that I'm going to be playing. And um, here it goes, Sean. I don't recognize you, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. It is his is, is, uh, alter ego. Um, so, yeah, so this is Annette and I, when the uh, boys, before the boys showed up, we used to go to the ballet and the opera quite a bit, but uh, once they came along, they, uh, they took a, a backseat to our, to our family. But uh, so I'd like to play uh, the, the ballet music. And to tell you, I, I see June. June Chambers out there, and you know, I, I think I'd like to, to dedicate this to, to David. It's uh, just a little ditty, but I think he'd enjoy it, so. we got something for you now from the 70s. Who remembers the 70s? <laughs> Trick question. Nobody remembers the 70s. That's how you know they were good. This is, uh, we got some Billy Joel for you. This is a song called Just the Way You Are. Don't go 
down before Don't imagine You're too familiar And I don't see you anymore I would not leave you In times of trouble We never could have come this far I took the good times I'll take the bad times I'll take you just the way you Change the color of your hair. You always have my unspoken passion, although I might not seem to care. Oh, I don't want clever conversation. I never want to work that. can talk to I want you just the way you are I need to know that you will always be the same old someone that I I promise from the heart I could not love you any better I love you just the way you Okay, so while I've got my sax out, I'm going to play something. Uh, oh, by the way, this this is Jordy's saxophone. That Jordy used to play this in high school. So uh, when I started playing it, I had to wash the mouthpiece very well, very thoroughly, because as anyone with a sibling knows, there's no worse contaminant than brother spit. But uh, I'm going to play something. Some, here's some 1950s rock and roll for you. Here's some uh, Bill Haley and the Comets, Rock Around the Clock.
you very much. Okay, I'm going to switch horns again. And I'm going to switch hats, too. This is a song that, uh, this was written in the 1930s. I think it was in the 1930s, something like that, by Irving Berlin. And uh, it was uh, performed often by Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers used to dance around to this one. And uh, Fred would often wear a top hat when he performed this one because he liked to put on the Ritz. Now we're going to do something uh, a little slower and more mellow. This is a song that was written by an Italian composer named Ennio Morricone. And he was best known for his uh, movie music. He wrote a lot of movie themes. Um, he was especially known for his spaghetti western uh, movies. Like he wrote the, the theme from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. That one. But that's not what I'm going to play. 
This is a little bit of a departure from his usual style. It's, uh, it's from the movie The Mission, and it's called Gabriel's Oboe. Now, this is not an oboe. It looks kind of like an oboe, but it's not exactly the same thing. So I will apologize in advance for my instrumental appropriation. That's a real thing, by the way. I, uh, I, was, uh, I, played, um, I played a concert somewhere, and I, just ha I played uh, something on the clarinet that was supposed to be played on a trumpet, just this little lick, and the trumpet player was pissed off. <laughs> and he didn't even talk to me for the whole show. And then finally, like years later, he eventually forgave me. But he still brings that up every time I see him. So if there are any oboe players in the audience, I do apologize. But I will be playing Gabriel's oboe on Sean's clarinet. Thank you very much. You know what's next, right? All right. So uh, now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's your turn to sing along. And uh, it's, uh, if you didn't get enough Irish stuff in the first act, we got one more for you. I'm going to, let's see if I have as much trouble putting that vest on the second time as I did the first time. Okay, no, it's going on well. Okay. This is, um... Aha! My dad's getting his squeeze box out for this one. Because it's just not a... It's just not a concert without an accordion, isn't it? So, uh... This is a song called The Rattlin' Bog. And I'm gonna need your help on the chorus. I know we've got some brilliant singers in the audience. I'm not gonna mention any names, but you know who you are. And uh, so I, I expect to hear your voices loud and clear on the chorus. And the lyrics are, Oh, ho, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. And if you miss it the first time, don't worry, you'll get plenty of opportunities to catch it because it repeats a lot. Oh, I just remembered. I got it. This is 
my cheat sheet. It's got the words on it. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Alright. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Now in this bog there was a tree, a rare tree, a rattling tree. Tree in the bog, in the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Now on this tree there was a limb, a rare limb, a rattling limb. Limb on the tree, in the tree, in the bog, in the bog, down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog, down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog, down in the valley, oh. Now on this limb there was a branch, a rare branch, a rattling branch. Branch in the limb, and the limb on the tree, in the tree, in the bog, in the bog, down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. And on this branch there was a twig, a rare twig, a rat and twig. Twig on the branch, and the branch on the limb, and the limb on the tree, and the tree in the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. And on this twig there was a leaf, a rare leaf, a rattling leaf. Leaf on the twig, and the twig on the branch, and the branch on the limb, and the limb on the tree, and the tree in the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. And on this leaf there was a nest, a rare nest, a rattling nest. Nest on the leaf, and the leaf on the twig, and the twig on the branch, and the branch on the limb, and the limb on the tree, and the tree in the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Now in this nest there was an egg, a rare egg, a rattling egg. Egg in the nest, and the nest on the leaf, and the leaf on the twig, and the twig on the branch, and the branch on the limb, and the limb on the tree, and the tree in the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Oh, oh, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Now in this egg. There was a leprechaun! A rare rattling leprechaun! Leprechaun in the egg, and the egg in the nest, and the nest on the leaf, and the leaf on the tree, and the twig on the branch, and the branch on the limb, and the limb on the tree, and the tree in the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh! Oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh! Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the one more time! Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh! Oh, oh, the rat and bog, the bog down in the valley, oh! I think I need a Guinness after that. I think we could all go for a Guinness. I heard y'all singing along, that was great. What fell out of my pocket? I know something did. Oh, God. that thing. <laughs> okay, we're, are we ready for the next one? Okay, well now that we've uh, thoroughly exhausted our Irish side, It's time to celebrate the other half of the family. You guys know what we're going to talk about. The Jewish half. If you, uh, you're going to go here, but not yet. If you haven't guessed already by her uncanny resemblance to Barbara Streisand, <laughs> my, my mother's side of the family is Jewish, and my dad's is Gentile, and I'm stuck in the middle. I get the best of both worlds. It's, uh, it's especially fun around the holidays when, uh, 
We like to combine our traditions. We hang dreidels on our Christmas tree. We, uh, we wash our lutkas down with a glass of eggnog. We uh, make gingerbread men with yarmulkes. Speaking of which. So we're going to sing a Jewish klezmer tune. And this, my mom's going to be singing this one in Yiddish. And um, this is a song, it, was, uh, it became a jazz standard in the 30s and 40s, I think. And it was also performed by Connie Francis, who was not Jewish, but we won't hold that against her. It's a song called Yossel Yossel. Which means Joseph Joseph. Is that okay for you? Uh, eh, a little bit lower. Can you do that for me? You can do it, right? I'm schlimpy. There we go. Who said that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, this is a very sad song. I should probably tell you what it's about because it's in Yiddish, but honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. A woman who loves a guy who doesn't love her back, and then it gets really happy because the music turns happy. So, whatever. You know, that's what happens. Music makes everybody happy. Und 
Lohamo la tora, yoso, echo liva dir. That's what, uh, that's Yiddish for, we want you to play it again. Nochamod. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> hey, back to the piano, you. Back to the drawing board. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who identify as gender neutral, <laughs> it's uh, coming up to the end of our show. I know, it's sad, isn't it? But uh, we've just got... One more tune for you, and uh, let's get the whole fam damily up for this one. I mean fam darnally. And uh, this is a special song because it's a song about all of you. Because it's a song about what great friends we have uh, looking out at the sea of blurry faces because we can't really see much, but we know you're there. And uh, we, uh, we just, we want to we wanna thank you all for being such great friends. We know that some of you came a long way for this. Some of you came all the way from Toronto. And some of you came all the way from Tottenham and Beaton. And Tom and Catherine came all the way from Italy. Oh, that's true, yeah. You guys, you guys are, you are going back to Italy after this, right? You just came by for, for our concert and then you're going back, right? Okay, yeah, that's, that's what we expect from you. And uh, so, anyway, this is a song about, uh, about our great friends, and, uh, and in the words of Randy Newman, you've got a friend in me. Ready for your, you know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to our show. We had a great time playing for you, but now it's time to say goodbye from Lorne. <laughs> Annette. <laughs> Jordy. <laughs> Ashley. 
And I'm Sean. We are the Dara family. We hope you enjoyed the show. And don't forget to stick around for the reception afterwards. Yes. On behalf of everyone on stage, we'd like to leave you with this message. Thank you very much. That's the only reason we came here. <laughs>